Hey, hey, mailbag 36-ish. Got some uh, parts that came in. And we'll start with a smaller bag here. Get this one out of the way. Make sure I don't cut into anything too important. And there's probably multiple bags. Oh, nothing that has a label on it. And LEDs. You can never have enough LEDs. Now, I've picked up some 10 millimeter. Uh, they've got four leads, so it's RGB. Uh, and these are the cathode, uh, common cathode. And also we've got some common cathode. That one of these should be common cathode. Uh, yeah, common cathode, uh, five millimeter. The specs on all of these are almost exactly the same. And five millimeter, common anode. So I've actually kind of uh, pre-set up a board so I can do some testing on this. So zoomed in, it's a bit better. Um, I did have to fix the resistors. I had them backwards. And I uh, had to add the bridge in here uh, because these breadboards are actually separate from side to side. Uh, this blue actually is coming in pretty good. The green swamping the camera, but if you do something like that, you can actually see it a bit better. Uh, this is a green blue right now, and that's kind of coming in a bit better now. So if it's common anode, it basically comes in on the long pin. And you have uh, the diodes. There's three diodes in here. You then set up your resistors. And if you want to vary it, uh, then you set up a trim pot. Uh, you can also do this with a microprocessor with uh, pulse modulation. I'm just going to move this up like this. So, for red, you have 5 volts coming in. Uh, it drops 2 volts across the LED in there. So you have 3 uh, volts left over. And the maximum is 20 uh, milliamps. So voltage divided by current equals resistor. So 3 divided by 0 0.02 is 150 ohms. So if this being 150 ohms, I can't max out uh, the chip. But I can then start uh, dropping the current draw using the trim pot. For the green and blue, they're both at around 3 volts. So 5 minus 3 is 2. 2 divided by 0 0.02 milliamps equals 100 ohms. So with this setup, you basically can't fry the LED. Now, for the, you know, show the colors a bit more in a second. So for the common uh, cathode, it's the vo um, 5 volts going through the pot, going through the resistors, coming down because this end is hooked up to ground. And this is just this one here and is a common cathode also. All the math's the same. And actually the specs between this one and this one, other than the size of it, uh, is almost identical. Uh, the numbers, almost no difference at all. Now let's see what else. Okay, now you're going, are you sure there's a red there? What I'm going to do is start pulling out resistors. There. So, there's the red. Stick those resistors back on. So the resistors are back on. So if I pull off, say, just the green. There. So by just varying these, you can adjust the color there. Another example of this is I can increase the current on the blue side.
I'm slowly taking the 100k pot down to almost zero resistance and that is uh, fairly bright. So that's it for these. I'm going to be using these for um, Halloween uh, and Christmas uh, decorations. Uh, particularly the green. I wanted to get that really eerie type green. And now bag number two. Let's see what's in this one. Okay, I think they melted the plastic together. Yes. Oh, label. Yeah. Dress is on the other side. And the dress is on the other side. So, let's go for the box. In camera view. Yeah, it's a bit crumpled. Yeah, quite a bit crumpled. Yeah. I'll put in the corner here who I got it from. But it's one of those little starlight projectors. Now, let me just see if I've got a... Oh, there's the battery. And I'll just hook this up. So it's one of those little star uh, ref shiners, projectors, whatever you want to call. Here's the instruction manual for it. DMX, start, off. The key to this lamp, useless. Okay, they're honest about that one. Uh, LED on off, stop. Uh, basically it stops the motor from moving. Uh, I can't see this thing having much sound, but okay. A is reddish. Oh, A1 is uh, red, A2 green, A3 blue, and then different combinations of them. Now, what I'm going to do is, uh, I already figured out that this thing will swamp the camera. So, I'm going to turn off the light. I'm going to hopefully rotate the camera around without it turning off on me, which it usually does. And then I'll start this up. And I'll have to see how this actually looks. So there's A1, A2, A3, A4, A5, A6, A7. And I can increase the speed. It says it does, but... I don't really notice it. Okay, look away if you don't like flashing things. That's annoying. And then you can basically also just stop it wherever you want. And pushing the useless key does nothing. Uh, the music ones... seem to just... Bounce it back and forth. Well, I wonder if that actually... Test, test, test. I wonder if, it actually, if you have music playing it then changes it. Now I'll just swing this back around. Watch out, it's going to be bright. So, lights on. Turn off the power. What's inside here? There we go. I'll take the 
rotator off, reflector, or whatever you want to call it, lens. Okay, this, oh, okay, that's a mic there. So, so you must just use sound activation for some of these uh, patterns. It's absolutely filthy in there. There's solder flux everywhere. That doesn't even look like the best uh, connection there either. I think they must have realized that mounting the mic straight up didn't help so they aimed it towards one side what else do we have in here uh, that looks like a no name maybe I'll try to do a schematic on this for a different video and of course there would be the motor uh, down below so let's get on to the next package and the next package Oh, these little, um, I picked up 10, and the price will be over there, of uh, these, they're pretty cheap, uh, USB plates. So it's basically just a USB light. And let's see how this goes. There. Just an oversized light for it. I think we know what's going to happen. Oh! <laughs> that came apart incredibly easy. Two little uh, chips. Or uh, LEDs. Doesn't look like there's any electronics. That's not too bad. I'll put that back together later. I was thinking of uh, be able to stick other type LEDs in there probably. Okay, next package. Nope. Oh, okay. Yep. <laughs> Guess I caught a bit of that one. This is actually going to be for a Halloween uh, type thing. Let's see, what do I need to run this? Okay, uh, USB-C. What it is, is a little mister. So there's the board. There we go. Then you have the little uh, piezo here. And the funnel, or the wick. Okay, I think I'll go get some water. I'm just going to be able to do one at a time on this. I've fired it up. Can you see that? Yeah, so this part here is actually just a wick. So you're going to have to build something to actually hold it all together. Yeah, I think you can see that. Yeah, that's not too bad. It's actually uh, outputting quite a bit. What I was going to use this with is that um, the green LED uh, that it can generate the right color and then uh, can have a misting green outside for Halloween. So obviously I'll have to build some more stuff with this. So that's it. I'll probably do a more detailed look but this video is getting long. So for this haul it basically is LEDs, more LED lights, a uh, little starry lighty thing, um, 
and if I've forgotten to put prices I will edit them in and the mister so these two are going to be used for Halloween type uh, displays well have a good one don't forget to take a look at that video and that video and my pumpkin video have a good day bye